going on everybody it is monday april 30th tomorrow it's gonna be may get your justin timberlake jokes ready right now uh we're back normal schedule today that was the corniest way that i could come in for this um so i'm going to now slide off to my partner jake jake what's going on how was your weekend it was good uh played some some dfs had some hockey success and I uh, didn't play as much baseball as I wanted to, but it was nice weather here, so got to take advantage <clears throat> while we can um, here in Minnesota. Uh, what's nice? What What's nice weather for you? Oh, it was weekend? like seventy and sunny oh, the nice. last okay. couple of days. Yeah, so it it gets really nice. Um, it gets really bad too, so <laughs> okay, got to take advantage. I didn't know so if that's you're what I was like, doing. Oh, it was uh, you know fifty five. Well, that'd be pretty nice. But, right. Compared exactly. to what we had two weeks ago, there was a there was a blizzard here two weeks ago. Now it's yeah, that's kind of crazy. Looking good. That's yeah. a big swing. Yeah. Um, we got ten games to talk about. Pretty sizable main slate. I like it. Uh, pitching will be interesting. Hitters, there's a ton of options. So, let's get into this with arguably the least interesting game of everything. Nats and Pirates. Uh, Nats with a four-run implied total. Pirates, 3.8. It's a 52% chance to win for the Nats. Tanner Roark going for Washington. Uh, Jamison Tyon going for Pittsburgh. I'm not really on either of these guys. Um, I don't have a problem with them, but it just doesn't feel like a game I'm going to have a lot of pitching from. Um, they're just sort of, they just sort of exist right at, like, right where they belong from a price perspective on both sides even uh are you looking at either of these guys no i I don't really like either one of these guys and maybe you should because of the run total but like i just don't see either of them getting the swings and misses that you need kind of for this price like you you'd have to pitch almost perfectly for 8k on dk without getting a lot of strikeouts at this price yeah um so i mean i I get it. I mean, people like playing Tyon, but I'm not going to play him against the Nationals. And then Roark always struggles with lefties, and then the Pirates are going to start out with four out of five lefties that don't really strike out that much, maybe outside of Dickerson. But I think it's just a tough matchup both ways. Um, do you like any of the bats here? Because this was, like you said, the least interesting game on the slate for me. Um, not especially. I think, like, I think the Pirates bats on DraftKings have the correct, like, some pretty decent pricing, but it's not really a game that I want to have a ton of with that 3.8 run implied total. Yeah. Um, let me think about it. Like, Harper as a one-off is whatever. I, I, I wouldn't seek it out, but I wouldn't be mad about it. I mean, Matt Adams is minimum salary on FanDuel. Um, I would entertain something like that in one-off scenarios, but I don't see it as a particularly stackable game. Yeah, I don't like any of the stacks. Um, Bryce Harper against a righty, really in play, anytime for pretty much any price. Um, and then Matt Adams for 3,400 on DK is fine. Dual position eligibility. Um, on the pirate side, though, really just Gregory Polanco maybe as a one-off and then I, I rarely play any of these guys um, for the Pirates so Same. really just Polanco for me they're and, all priced on FanDuel so it's hard for me to get to most of them like yeah. Polanco's more expensive on FanDuel <clears throat> Josh Bell is more expensive on FanDuel so it makes it a lot more yeah. difficult to get to those guys yeah yeah I don't, I don't know this is just a pretty underwhelming game not too much to talk about yeah Cubs and Rockies, a little bit more to talk about here. Uh, Cubs, 4.5 run implied total. Rockies, 3.5. Uh, that's based on my made-up line. The, the side is out, but the total is not. So I'm going with 8. I'd be surprised if it's lower than that. Um, so it's possible that the bats in this game look even better than they do right now. Uh, 62% chance to win for the Cubs. It's John Lester going for Chicago and Kyle Freeland going for Colorado. Uh, I like Lester quite a bit. Um He's one of my four main guys on FanDuel, and he would be one of my main pitchers on DraftKings, whether that's as 
my second starter or my first starter, depending on which way I went. Um, I think there are ways to go both. You're not the biggest Leicester fan in the world, though, correct? No, I'm not. Um, and this game could be a Wrigley win game also. So just looking at it right now, is there? there's no total, right, you said? Uh, no, not that I saw. Yeah, so that's probably they're going to wait till closer to game time to see what the wind's going to do because right now I'm seeing 13 miles an hour out to left. <clears throat> yeah, that'll make and the Lester, bats look tasty. Yeah, Lester being a lefty, you got righty power on the Rockies with Eric Nato and LeMay who's hitting really well this year, Trevor Story if he can make contact, and then Ionetta. So those are four pretty tough righties against a lefty like Lester. And then I, I just don't think Lester's what he used to be. Um, he's probably always going to be pretty decent at creating soft contact, so I don't really want to stack against him, but any of those guys I mentioned, specifically Arenado and Ionetta, I think make for decent one-offs. Ionetta is 2,900 um, on DK. So those yeah, he's two guys, a great one-off catcher option. Yeah, yeah, especially if the wind's blowing out. And I don't know. I don't like these Wrigley win games because everybody's super low-owned. Like, it's a Coors game, and it seems like they disappoint more times than not. Yeah, if this and so, let me let me give a caveat to my Lester interest. I like Lester if this game stays at an eight total. Mm. Um, the higher that goes, I already love the Cubs bats. The higher that goes, obviously, the more I like the Cubs bats. I think that'll bring the Rockies into play a little bit too if that goes up. But if that line goes up, uh, like every half run makes me like Lester significantly less. So he'll fall down the rankings if that line is actually nine instead of eight. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye on that. I like Lester at eight. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, the wind does affect the stadium as much or more than than any other in the MLB. So that's why there's no total right now, and um, it definitely does make a difference. So. Yeah, if it is 15 plus mile per hour winds blowing out to left at game time, this line's going to move up, and I'm not going to be able oh, yeah. to on Lester. Like it's yeah. just that's how it's going to work. It's hard to yep. tell at nine o'clock in the morning. Yep. Uh, I love the Cubs bats though. Um, even at eight, so anything that that goes up is going to be insane. But Almora, Baez, Bryant, Contreras, like I can't get enough of those guys. Chris Bryant at forty two hundred on FanDuel is going to be in just an overwhelming amount of lineups for me. Okay. Um, so Freeland, he's not usually a guy I look to stack against, just because he's such a good ground ball pitcher and. He even does it in Coors a lot of times where he'll just kind of get by. But you can definitely take one-offs for me against him or even like mini stack with Almora and Chris Bryant. Those are my two favorite bats. And then Contreras uh, is the other guy I like a lot. You don't uh, like Baez? I do like Baez. I don't love his price on DK, okay. 4700 He doesn't have that great of like hard hit numbers against lefties, and he, he never really has. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I, he could certainly hit a home run. He's, he's trying to hit a home run every time out. That's uh, very true. But Freeland is, I think, underrated as, uh, or he's overrated as someone we want to stack against in DFS, I think. Okay. So, when it's going to be chalky to stack against him, I'm usually not looking to go that route. I just see this, like, if that wind really is blowing out to left. Yeah. But the, like, the idea of having Baez makes it really appealing to me because that dude is straight pull power left. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's true. He looks like he's in a situation where a home run could be a very feasible outcome. Yeah. I can't get enough Cubs. I like Addison Russell if he's hitting seventh, too. Uh, 2,400 on Fandle to, to fill out a shortstop spot. You can get a really nice stack at premium positions with the Cubs if you wanted to go Baez, Bryant, Addison Russell, and then you know take your pick of Almora or Wilson Contreras. Uh, I'm gonna end up with a bunch of Cubs. They'll probably be my third most popular stack, um, if I had to guess. And that could meet. They could definitely get to that top spot if that line jumps. Yeah, I mean, I certainly get the the Cubs stack. Um, <clears throat> it's just like I said, like the the wind affects pe how people play these slates so yeah. much that um, I'm more likely to fade it or just take a bat or two instead of 
full stacking. But if if I had a bunch of lineups like you, then for sure I would have some Cub stacks here and there. Gotcha. Uh, are you looking at Rockies at all? Yeah, just uh, just Arenado and Ionetta. Okay. Yeah, Ionetta for me would be a, a a good play one way or the other, no matter what happens for that line. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty nine hundred on DK is hard to pass up for a righty lefty matchup for a catcher. Yep. All righty. Marlins and Phillies. Marlins, 3.5 run implied total. Phillies, 4.0. It's a 43% chance to win for the Marlins, which is yuck. Dan Straley going for Miami. Jake Arrieta going for the Phillies. Um, I play Arietta a lot. Pretty much every start, he grades out pretty well for me, and that's no different today. Uh, I'll have a bunch of him on FanDuel. I don't love the price as much on DraftKings with him being the most expensive pitcher, uh, but it's not something that would totally keep me off him. I would still end up with a bunch of them on DK if I were playing. But Arietta for me, will be one of my three most owned pitchers. Yeah, it's just the price that I'm having a tough time with. He is, I believe, the most expensive pitcher on DK. He is. Uh, Morton's yeah. $400 cheaper. Ricky yeah. is $700 cheaper. Yeah, so I just don't know that he has huge K upside. And I said that a couple starts ago, and I think he had like nine and seven innings and um, get like he, 40 he went, DK. He went real points. well in that one. Yeah, so maybe I'm just having a tough time getting a read on Arietta. Uh, I know he, he sort of came back down to earth in his last start. Um, and so did the, the swinging strike rate. Like, So he went seven innings, ten strikeouts, two starts ago. Seven innings, two strikeouts, last start. I don't think he's – like I think those are two extremes. I think he's probably somewhere in the middle of that when he has good starts. But um, – like the swinging strike rate outside of that one really awesome game has been below seven in all three starts. So I just don't think that I'm like, he's not missing the bats that I would like to see for that price. And then these Marlins, man, these, these guys are just, I hate them. I say it every time, but they're just <laughs> pesky. Like they're just annoying. And now they got Martin Prado back in the lineup and he rarely strikes out. Um, Rojas rarely strikes out. Um, Bore's tough against righties. I don't know. I, for, as weird as it is to say, and this run total uh, is really low for the Marlins, as it should be, but I just don't really want to target against the Marlins with super expensive pitchers because they've just done a good job at not striking out. I hear you. I think, that's a, like, I think it makes a lot of sense on DraftKings at that price point. Yeah. Um, Arietta, $400 cheaper than Morton on FanDuel, $300 cheaper than Grinky on FanDuel. It's just a much different price point. Um, so and keep that in mind for people. Yeah. Very different you, site. Yeah. Dude, go ahead. And so, and so I'm talking about, about DK if, if people, if there's new listeners or whatever. That's a good point. Um, so I'm usually referring to DK pricing. On FanDuel, it's a little bit different for me with Arietta just because the win is so much more important on FanDuel. And Arietta is the third most expensive pitcher, which is where I would want to see him on DK tonight. So. Yeah, if Arietta had Grinky's price tonight and Grinky had his price, Arietta would look significantly more interesting mm -hmm. just by moving yeah. that 700 bucks. So yeah, uh, for those that don't normally hear this, I normally play uh, max entry on FanDuel. Jake is a single lineup guy on DraftKings. So you're getting very distinctly different perspectives on both sides of the coin. Perfect, perfect co-hosts. <laughs> get it all from us um, yeah I'll, I'm going to end up with a ton of uh, Arietta. Phillies bats uh, I don't really have much interest um, you know Carlos Santana as always looks like a decent one off to me but four run implied total I'm, I'm good I don't there's not a lot there and there's, there's way too many better stacks out there tonight I do have some interest in the Phillies bats so do you have Straley going for the Marlins? Yes. Okay. So, Straley's a guy that, that I actually liked using last year. He had a 12.2% swinging strike rate. was getting a bunch of whiffs. Um, he's pitched okay in his last couple of minor league starts. But as you can see in, in like just the game logs with his minor league stuff, he's going to have home run issues. And specifically, he's had him against righties. Um, so when he's off, like he's going to get lit up by... Well, both hands, but like righties, 
righties can definitely get to him. And then these Phillies, they have Hoskins and Althair and Franco and Carlos Santana, who's a switch hitter. But those guys can all take Straley deep, I think. Sure. Um, so I actually have interest in both sides of that Straley versus Phillies lineup. And um, Straley's 6,300 on DK. So if he's healthy and he's missing bats like he was last year, I think he is a really nice pay down option. Um, but I would also like to have exposure to the Philly stack because uh, I don't think anybody's going to really be on it because of that run total. Agreed. And because it's a lot of righty righty stuff. But I would stack up uh, Hoskins, Althair, Franco, even Kingery, um, and then Carlos Santana. I like all those guys. Okay. So I think it's going to be it's going to go one way or the other, and I think you'll know pretty quick how it's going to go. Yeah, they they won't have ownership. You won't need much to differentiate with a Philly mm-hmm. stack. Yeah. Yeah, I, this game's just all uh, all Arietta for me. Okay. Now the next one, a little bit different. Uh, Reds and Brewers. Reds four point yeah. seven run implied total. Brewers four point eight. Uh, it's a fifty one percent chance to win for the Brewers. Brandon Finnegan going for Cincinnati. Julius Chassin going for Milwaukee. I don't want the pitchers in any way. I just want basically every bat in the game. Um, I'll have stacks of both of these teams. Brewers are my number one stack with a bullet right now. Only way they're coming out of that spot is if that Cubs line grows. Uh, and then the Reds are probably my third stack. Uh, I'm just going to have a like an overwhelming amount of this game. Can't like Everybody's good. I'll take it all. Yeah, I like both sides of this. I think that um, the Brewers are probably the Brewers are top three stacks for me for sure. Just whether or not they're going to be one or two, and see if they get into my lineup. Um, so uh, Finnegan is pretty bad. Um, yeah, I don't really need to talk about him much. He's going to give up a bunch of hard contact, a bunch of home runs. So like the righties, of course, are in play. Kane, Braun, Santana. Braun's probably one of my favorite plays on the slate on DK for 4,500. You can play him at first base or outfield. Uh, but don't forget about the lefties here as well. So Yelich and Shaw, both of them can really hit lefties, and Finnegan's get, getting hit pretty hard by lefties. So Brewer Stack, one of my favorite plays on the slate, and I wouldn't go out of my way to uh, like take Yelich and Shaw out of my lineup. So Agreed. That's where I'm at on the Brewer's. Oh, I forgot about my boy, Jesus Aguilar, uh, 3100 on DK. That's a nice price. You have him in? I, I'm seeing him in what I'm looking at right now. But he, I don't know if he was hurt or what was going on. Let's see if. Let me take a look. I don't have him in right now. Okay. You, you're probably right. Um, <laughs> but if he is in the lineup, him against a lefty, like, that's a lock. No, it's, it's not a lock, but he is really good against lefties. He, he hits them really hard. No, for sure. Yeah, I have, uh, like, Kane, Braun, and Domingo Santana for me are the three, like, far and away best options on FanDuel. Domingo Santana, only 2,800. Uh, these guys are just going to show up a boatload. I'll have a bunch of Yelich. I'll have a bunch of Shaw. I don't, I'm not really worried about that lefty-lefty matchup. Um, Finnegan won't be around long enough for it to matter. <laughs> At least yeah, because it's gonna definitely be heavier on the Brewers than any other team. I think, yeah, I think Finnegan gets pounded here, and like Manny Pena for twenty five hundred on DK. It's just, I don't know why the Brewers aren't priced up more on DK. It's kind of frustrating because they're gonna be pretty chalky, I think. Yeah. Uh, especially that middle of the lineup. And if Aguilar's in there and Hernan Perez, if he somehow finds his way in there. Uh, this lineup has changed dramatically for me then. So it, everything that I have is actually wrong. Well, wrong. It could right be. Now. I don't know. I don't I don't know what they're going to do with so the lineup. Or I'm seeing Aguilar now at five. So, And no Domingo Santana. Really? Yeah, I'm seeing no Domingo Santana either. But when I looked last night, he was in the projected lineup. So... Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on. I didn't update this because I didn't see any updates, but apparently I missed the Brewers for sure. Um, I'll update for this right now while we're here. That way we can take a look at it. Okay. Hernan Perez at six instead of VR. 
considering this is my favorite stack, um, I at least want to see what this looks like after I update this. Arcia goes to eight. Pena goes to seven. Yeah. Bandy out. Kane, Yelich, Braun, Shaw, Aguilar, Perez, Pena, RC. Yeah, I, so like nothing has changed for me. Hernan Perez is now an exceptional play at 2200 on FanDuel. Um, I still love Kane and Braun a ton. Uh, I'm in for Jesus Aguilar, 2800 on FanDuel, 3100 on DK. Uh, basically, everything that I thought prior to this is still valid. The Brewers will be my number one stack, and I'll have a ton of them. Yeah, I, I love the Brewers. I don't think we need to talk about them too much. I think they're one of the most obvious plays. Agreed. Probably going to be one of the most owned plays, maybe outside of the Cubs. Uh, so got yeah, another one to come in two games that might oh. be higher than them. Okay, you're right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I love the Reds though too. We didn't really touch on that. Joey Votto looks to be in an awesome <clears throat> spot. Forty-one hundred on Fanduel, forty-six hundred on DK. Um, I mentioned it in the spotlight hitters. I, I want to. I'm thinking I'm getting the, the ranking right, but he is fifth in the league in the past two years in uh, the so in soft contact versus righties, like the lowest amount of it. Votto is. Yeah, just like, I believe it. He's squaring up anything that a righty yeah. like pitches to him. So uh, when Chassin doesn't exactly have the same sort of electric stuff he's had, well, never. But uh, I can't get enough of Otto. Scooter Jeanette looks good for me. Don't love the price, but I'll take it. Um, Jesse Winker. Uh, I'm just going to have a big red stack as well. They're priced down on FanDuel. Lots of, like, sub-3,000 guys that can make stuff work if I go to Charlie Morton, for example. Yeah, so you might be the Reds' whisperer. You were on them, and I think, on Friday, and they had, like, 15 runs. So um, yeah. and that I was not on that. And, <laughs> yeah, I got pushed out of the cash by a... Jose Peraza double dong, chalk double dong for Jose Peraza. So I'll just that was assume not that maybe great. Thousands of dollars. What? I'll just assume that uh, made me thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would have just like min cash, but I was like, really, this guy's gonna hit two home runs? Did he even have two home runs last year? Uh, you might. Anyways. <laughs> anyways, yeah, I, I do like the Reds here. Uh, it's mostly three through six. So Vado, Jeanette. Suarez and Duvall. Votto is a really awesome cash play. Pretty much anytime he's against a league average righty. Yeah. Uh, Jeanette for thirty six hundred on DK is nice. And then the two righty, the two power righties after them, Suarez and Duvall, both have a chance to take Chassin Yard. I don't think he's particularly good against either hand this year. So Reds four or three through six is my preferred stack here. Uh, Peraza last year, five home runs in 518 okay. plate appearances. <laughs> He's got 10 total in his career. There we go. That's, of course, of course so, he yeah. does. I'm on the Reds. I'm on the Brewers. I don't see that changing. Yeah. Tigers and Rays. Uh, Tigers, 4.4 run implied total. Rays, 4.6. It's a 48% chance to win for the Tigers. Jordan Zimmerman going for Detroit. Jake Faria going for Tampa Bay. Well, Tampa? Whatever. Um, I don't have any pitching here. Uh, Faria, I guess, could be applicable in FanDuel, but I'm good. Faria is interesting on DK. He's 7,200. I'm not sure that I get the huge run total here. Or do you have it at 9? That's not huge, but... I do have it at 9. Yeah. Um, like I kind of have interest in both pitchers. So Faria in the non-Red Sox start. Uh, he, yeah, so we'll give him a pass. He faced the Red Sox the first two starts of the season. 12.810 and 16.9% swing strike rates. So he's been much better, as most people are after they face the Red Sox. Uh, but almost 47% hard contact on the year. The price is good. Uh, the matchup is a little bit scary. I'm a little bit worried to use him here, even though the Tigers aren't really a great team, but they do have some power. And if Farah is not missing bats, he's going to get lit up. Uh, if Miguel Cabrera is for some reason not in the lineup, he's got a questionable tag next to him right now. But if he's not in the lineup, that is an upgrade for Faria. Sure. Uh, so, I don't know. 
I mean, I do have some interest at 7,200, but there's a bunch of guys that are cheap that I like. Um, and then Zimmerman's 4,400. Like, a starting pitcher for 4,400 that can kind of miss some bats is someone that I'm going to have a little bit of interest in or at least look at. Uh, he's got a 10.4% swinging strike rate. He's getting some chases out of the zone. Um, the red, the Rays have been hot, but I could certainly see them laying an egg here in a big park. So Zimmerman for 4,400 is, it's just a price thing. If he was like 6,400, I probably wouldn't mess with him, but like you don't really need much out of him there. Yeah, I won't be touching either of these guys. Um, Faria's price is too high for me on DK compared to where he is on FanDuel. Like I would much, I would, it, I'd have a hard time not just spending four hundred more dollars and getting Eduardo Rodriguez. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that that's also the problem is Eduardo Rodriguez is seventy six hundred. Yeah. yeah. So um, only thing that I would be looking at in this game would be a, a Rays stack, probably the top half of that. Jordan Zimmerman just can't miss enough bats. Um, so I think guys like I, I'll have some cheapo Rays stacks. Like Spawn, CJ Crone, if he's playing, uh, Carlos Gomes and Brad Miller are all super duper cheap. So they'll make some things work in some of my like Charlie Morton plus Red Sox type stacks. Yeah, uh, I certainly get like I get a lot of plays in this game. Um, I don't know. I mean, you made a good point about Faria. That's probably what's going to push me off of him is is Erod's price. I do like Eduardo Rodriguez better. Um, but anytime you can get a starting pitcher for 4,400, and I don't even know if you're going to need him on this slate, but if you want to just pay up for every bat and go with one of the top guys like Morton or Granky with Zinnerman, you could probably do pretty much whatever you want with the rest of your lineup. I'll spend 400 less and take Ross Stripling for the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, I looked at him too, but he's just not going to throw that many pitches. Probably like he's probably going to throw like three innings. Probably not, yeah. Um... Yeah, mini Rays stack is fine for me. Uh, I probably wouldn't want to have too much of the the Tigers. It's just, like, I don't know. I should like the game more from a, a run perspective. They're just going to exist. I'll have, there'll be, there'll be guys that have, like, 3 and 4% of. Okay. <clears throat> now, the next one, not the same sort of scenario. Red Sox and Royals. 5.2 run implied total for the Red Sox, 3.5 for the Royals. It's a 68% chance to win for the Red Sox. Eduardo Rodriguez going for Boston. Jason Hamill going for Kansas City. Uh, Rodriguez is my favorite play from a pitcher on the slate, if we're talking dollar for dollar. Uh, he'll be the guy I probably have the most of, and I can't get enough. I won't have any Jason Hamill. <laughs> yeah, Eduardo Rodriguez is probably my favorite pitcher on the slate dollar per dollar or a point per dollar i should say um <clears throat> he's just too cheap for this matchup like he just keeps not getting priced up he didn't have a great outing in his last start when we were on him um but he still survived like he had 14.8 dk points didn't kill you um and the royals are ninth in strikeout percentage against lefties this year with Salvador Perez back in the lineup, that does make them a little bit tougher. Yeah. But, like, outside of Perez and Soler, there's not really guys that I'm scared of in the Royals lineup. It's good pitching weather for Erod. His team's expected to score a boatload of runs. Swinging strikes look great. Whiffs are good. Uh, I mean, I think he's going to be a pretty obvious play, but, uh, yeah, I don't see myself trying to fade him for any reason here. Now, only thing where I would want to touch on, there should be some rain in like the 5, 6, and 7 o'clock window for this game. Uh, it looks like it's going to clear out into the night, so it might be a bit of a delayed start. I'm not super worried about any postponements or any uh, like rain delays during the game, so keep an eye on that. As long as it looks like it's going to clear up into the night, I have no problem going to Rodriguez. Uh, if that changed a bit and some of that rain moved out into like the 9 10 o'clock range i might have a little bit more pause in the amount i would want of him on the off chance that it gets a it hits like a sizable rain delay but red sox bats are definitely something i want a part of 
highest implied total by three tenths of a run right now. I want a bunch of bets. Uh, ben and Tendi looks great in a lefty righty matchup against Jason Hamill. Uh, I want Hanley, JD Ramirez. Uh, I don't love Devers' price, but I'll have him in a stack. I even think Jackie Bradley at uh, 2,400 on FanDuel is a nice option since he should have guys on pretty regularly. Play yeah, I love the Red Sox. Sox. Yeah, I love them. Uh, Hamill, and I love the lefties especially, but we know they have a really, it's like a, a bunch of good righties too. Yeah. So Hamill's had a couple nice starts in a row, but I, I don't really believe in that one bit. He's getting crushed by lefties, top 20 in average exit velocity among starting pitchers against lefties this year. And then the Red Sox have been one of the tougher teams in the MLB against righties this year. So just a really bad combo for Jason Hamill. So Benintendi and Devers, I love them. Uh, and then Betts and JD and Bogarts and Hanley, even Jackie Bradley, like you said, I like all these guys for the Red Sox. The run total is huge. So, I mean, who do you think is going to be the most owned stack tonight if that Wrigley game is a win game? Like if, if there's wind blowing out in Wrigley? The Cubs. Yeah, I think so too. Cubs against a lefty. Yeah, with if a that bunch line of those righties. Up, it's the Cubs. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I prefer the Red Sox by a pretty wide margin regardless. Um, so I'm hoping that wind's blowing out in Wrigley and, and some people get off the Red Sox and onto the Cubs because I prefer the Red Sox against Jason Hamill. Yeah, I would say Cubs and then... Hmm. Brewers. Brewers or Red Sox. Mm. That imply, if that implied total stays where it is for the Red Sox, it could be the Red Sox. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I know I'll have a bunch of them, so. <laughs> Astros and Yankees. Um, Astros, 4.7 implied total. Yankees, 3.8. It's a 59% chance to win for the Astros. Charlie Morton going for Houston. Sonny Gray uh, going for New York. I like Morton. Um, I'll have as much as I can get of him. Uh, it's basically Morton, Arietta, Lester, and Rodriguez for me. They'll make up just about all of my exposure from a pitching perspective. And I think Morton is the best option on DraftKings. Uh, I like him better than Arietta at $400 cheaper. And I like him significantly better than Grinky, uh, even though he is $300 more expensive. Yeah, I thought I was going to like Grinky just like looking at the prices uh, for pitching and like, just the matchups on paper. But Morton... I think is my number one today. He's 10,500 on DK. His team's expected to score a bunch of runs. It is never a fun matchup against the Yankees, but no. Morton's got the stuff to dominate this lineup uh, and pretty much any lineup. Um, he's His curveball is getting the most whiffs per swing of any curve of any player that's thrown over 100 curveballs by 13%. So wow. he's up to like 55% whiffs per swing on his curveball, which is pretty insane stuff. His arm is just uh, going to explode on one of those curveballs. Yeah, but until then, yeah. woohoo! Because uh, this guy is... I mean, he's odd. He's pretty insane to watch. Uh, he's got like a 40% K rate against lefties this year. Um, so yeah. while Judge and Stan and Sanchez and even like Hicks are scary, uh, I just think Morton has the highest strikeout upside of really anyone on the slate. So, I agree. He's just, I'm not expecting him to be perfect. And it's one of the better prices we've seen for him on DK. He's been up over 11K, like near 12K. So, I'll take the discount and the tougher matchup and just bet on the talent here. Yeah, I'll, I like him here a lot. Um, I'm really surprised to see the Yankees implied total be 3.8 in this spot. Like, that's, Astros are big favorites here. So, I'm, I'm very happy rolling with Morton. Don't have a ton of interest in any bats in this. Um, Guriel, I guess, on DK looks pretty nice. But not a game that I'm going to be terribly interested in stacking. Uh, I know the Astros will probably come along for the ride for a couple of them, but they're just pretty expensive. Yeah, they are expensive. I, I do like them as a contrarian stack on DK, just because I don't think people will be on the Astros that much. And Gray... Uh, the, so the problem is, 
once you get past the starting pitcher for the Yankees, their bullpen is pretty tough. But Gray has a 36.8% hard contact rate against righties this year. Uh, he's given up the fourth most or the fourth highest average exit velocity against righties. So you start off with Springer, Altuve, Correa, Uriel. Those are four guys that I like. Um, but you're going to need them to do damage off Gray, which they definitely could. Yeah. Um, but then afterwards, the Yankees' bullpen is pretty tough. Yankees' bullpen, uh, first in XFIP, they have a 12.7 Ks per nine rate. The entire reliever yeah. set for the Yanks this year. Uh, just yeah. real nasty. So, got to get to Sunny Gray early or it's going to be a long night. Um, yeah. I just won't be on a ton of bats here. It'll just be a bunch of Charlie Morton for me. That's fair. Yeah. So, Morton's my number one, just kind of out of default or by default. Yeah. Twins and Blue Jays. Uh, Twins, 4.9 run implied total. Blue Jays, 4.6. It's a 52% chance to win for the Twins. Uh, Lance Lynn going for Minnesota. Aaron Sanchez going for Toronto. Uh, this is a no-go pitching game for me, and it's a big-time bats game for me. Who, who are or which stack do you like better, the Twins or? Uh, let's see what's popping up more for me. <clears throat> Probably it looks like the Twins are coming up a little bit more for me than the Blue Jays. So give me. Mauer, Rosario, Kepler, um, Logan Morrison. You know, I'm happy to have some Dozier and Sano. I'd go anywhere one to seven is pretty much fine with me. I don't love Eduardo Escobar's price, but it's fine if you're getting a shortstop in the stack. Uh, I think the Twins are just dramatically underpriced for this uh, 4.9 run implied total. Yeah, um, I do kind of like both both sides here for the bats same and then i'm i'm like torn what to do with the pitcher so sanchez started off had a couple really nice starts and then kind of was pretty bad for a couple starts and then last start he had like a 17 percent swing strike rate so he's just been confusing for me all year um i'm not looking to play him here against the twins in a good park in good weather uh but he's always been kind of good at limiting hard contact so I don't think the Twins are, like, my favorite stack. Uh, and then Lance Lynn is just another cheap guy that I somewhat have interest in, 6,200 on DK. He is 14th in Whisper Swing this year, 13.1% swinging strike rate. Wow. Those are two things that I like to see. Yeah, I, I was surprised. Um, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if I can actually play him here <laughs> is the thing. Homer. There are, yeah. Like, the Blue Jays may not be the best team, but they've got – the best player to ever exist, Teoscar Hernandez, uh, Justin Smoke, Solarte, Russell Martin, Kendris Morales. The, I don't know. It's just a lot of landmines here for Lance Lynn that I don't really want to mess around with. But I wouldn't be surprised if either of these pitchers had good games. Ooh, I would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't I'm, know. Just I, I hope they don't because I'm going to have a lot of the bats. So yeah. it would be in my best interest to see them not succeed from a pitching perspective. I think I prefer the Blue Jays as a stack, actually. So that's the stand I'll take. Um, just those guys I mentioned. Granderson leading off, Smoke, Solarte, and Teoscar. So the top four. Okay. I think Russell Martin and Kendrys Morales, if they're in the lineup, both have really nice prices. Martin's yeah. only 2200 on FanDuel. Not that I love this matchup or anything, but Morales only 2300 on FanDuel. Uh, you can fit in really, like, really cheap Blue Jay stacks with whatever else you want. So. Yeah. Uh, I like everything in this game, basically. Um, outside of Kevin Pillar and Lourdes Gurriel, uh, I'll have like almost everybody in a decent amount. So, if this game goes uh, two to one, you can assume that I didn't have the best night. <laughs> the Blue Jays just keep not getting priced up yeah, on both sides. It seems like, and they keep being chalk and keep crushing. I keep, so. I, I keep writing about them every day, basically. Yeah. There are teams that I don't feel like I ever talk about. It's weird. Yeah. I well, I mean, if they don't have good hit, like, you're not going to write up the Marlins stack. <laughs> Very rarely. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Two games left. That's not how you spell Diamondbacks. 
Diamondbacks and Dodgers. Uh, D-backs, 4.1 run implied total. Dodgers, 3.9. It's 52% chance to win for the Diamondbacks. I'm very, very surprised that this line is what it is. Let me confirm that it hasn't changed in any way because I just assumed that it would have been bigger than this. No. Nope. Well, it's starting to move a little bit. Let me, let me make this little adjustment while we're here. It's now it's 125, moving. 135. So. Okay, so it's moving Granky's way? Yeah. Okay, that yeah, I was confused too when I looked at this last night. It was like a pick 'em. Yeah, Grink, Grinky's climbing up the boards a little bit. Nothing crazy. It's now more like Diamondbacks 4.3, Dodgers 3.7. 56% chance to win for Grinky. Um, so obviously, yeah, Grinky going for Arizona. Ross Stripling going for the Dodgers. Grinky's not somebody I'm going to have a ton of on FanDuel. That, mo that line's going to have to move a bundle for him to catch up to like Lester and Arietta. Uh, two guys that I prefer more here today. Uh, Grinky's growing on DraftKings. I already have him in like 17-ish percent, um, so that number could go up. Um, I want to like him more, but I don't really like going against the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like just we we've talked about it how the Dodgers haven't been good and like they don't have a good record or whatever. Like they're like flirting with 500. Um, they're supposed to be one of the best teams in the league, or at least we thought so at the beginning of the year. Um, but just like looking at their team plate discipline numbers, they are bottom five in all of swing percentage, O swing percentage, and swinging strike percentage. So that was a concern for me. Another concern is that Granky's hard contact numbers are up um, for both sides. Um, like he could still strike out a bunch of guys here. He's probably my second favorite, but I think I have Morton well ahead of him as of now. Um, and then the line was just weird. Like why, like the Dodgers had like a 4.2 run total uh, against Granky. I know it's a good park or whatever, but it was still a little bit fishy for me. So I don't know. I think I'm just going to go with Morton if I have to pay up with one of these guys. Yeah, I think, I think we'll see this line grow and grow throughout the day. Um, so it'll be something to keep an eye on, but... I, d I don't expect it to grow enough for me to be interested in Grinky. Yeah, I was really shocked to see the Dodgers so good at the plate discipline stuff. Um, I just assumed they were waving and missing at everything. And yeah. That's why you look at the numbers, I guess, because yeah, what real. I was seeing, like my eyes were, were lying to me, I guess. Uh, are you looking at any hitting here? I like some one-offs against Grinky. It might be a little bit too cute on a 10-game slate. Um but like Bellinger, Grandal, and Seager, those are three guys that I think their prices are okay, and the matchups, match the individual matchup against Cranky isn't awful for those guys. So I wonder if we'll see Bellinger. Oh, is he is he out of the lineup? Headline, uh, one of the top headlines from ESPN: Roberts benches Bellinger, cites lack of hustle. Lack of hustle. Get out of here. I didn't even see what, but d just put your guys in the lineup. Yeah, I agree. God, I hate that old school nonsense. Agreed. I can't stand that Agreed. lack of hustle. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, one. Yeah, God. it's one thing if he's like not running to first base. Like, come on, yeah, that stuff's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have like a, a terribly large amount of interest in anything. Uh, Jared Dyson, I think, grades out really well. For his price, twenty six hundred on Fanduel, um, three thousand on DK. I don't have much else to like talk about for these guys, but it's just like not a horrible <clears throat> price. Um, I won't have a ton of this game on either side. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the the Diamondbacks bats either. Stripling looks pretty good, and then the Dodgers bullpen as a whole looks pretty good as well. So I don't know if it's going to be a righty or lefty that's coming in after Stripling, but. Um, I would not play Ross Stripling. He is probably not going to go past like three, maybe four innings if he's rolling. And I mean, just play Jordan Zimmerman if you're going to look for a near minimum priced pitcher because Zimmerman's not on a pitch count from what I've seen. And Stripling, he's gone, I think two innings is the most he's gone in any relief appearance yeah. so far. So Descalso or Goldschmidt one offs are really all that I have. Interesting. Descalso is just 2800 so if you need a, a last guy in at second or third base on DK, I think he makes for a nice play there. 
I, I don't have any problem with any of that. Final game, Giants and Padres. Giants, 4.2 run implied total. Padres, 3.5. 58% chance to win for the Giants. Uh, it's Jeff Samarja going for San Francisco. Eric Lauer going for San Diego. Um, you know, Samarja's just sort of there for me. Not a guy that I'm going to be targeting. Uh, Eric Lauer, not, definitely not a guy that I'm going to be targeting. Uh, this is just... Smart is just whatever. Uh, I'd, I'd have a little bit of interest in the top part of the Giants lineup, and that's about it. Yeah, me too. I, I thought I was going to like Samarja a little bit better, but digging into him, I think he might get some ownership here yeah, just because it's the Padres. It's a good park. But um, I don't know. I don't think the strikeouts are, have really been there for him this year. Yeah. Um, like it, In theory, it's a good price against someone who – I don't know. I just, I just don't really want to play Samarja that much for for 8,700 just from like the swinging strike and the whiff stuff has not been great. Um, but I'm not particularly scared of any Padres here besides no. Franchi Cordero. Um, he's the one guy I think could take Samarja deep. Maybe Hosmer if he gets all of one. Yeah, I'm um, good on the Padres bats. Yeah, but I'm like I'm not going out of my way to target either side. Maybe outside of McCutcheon or Buster Posey, but yeah, these guys are Fernandez, waiting on Fernandez, twenty one hundred on Fanduel. You know, I'm fine having him as part of a small level giant stack with McCutcheon, mm-hmm. Posey, Longoria, uh, Kelby Tomlinson. Like, if you needed a really unique stack on the Giants, you can get there using Tomlinson and the rest of the Giants. Um, but like McCutcheon, Posey, Longoria looks good against a lefty. I'll, I'll, I'd take my chances there. They're cheap. Posey's twenty eight hundred. Longoria three thousand. Um, they're not a team that I'm going to have a lot of, but it wouldn't shock me if it went well for them. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just I don't think I can do it with the Giants here. Uh, I agree. <laughs> they yeah. wouldn't be in my single lineup. Like we were talking about, like the Astros and the Brewers, and uh, even like the Twins and Blue Jays and uh, Red Sox. These guys all have huge power and. Like, you could see them hitting a handful of home runs, and I just cannot see that in this park for the Giants. Big wind um, blowing dead center today, though. 18 <clears> miles <throat> an hour right now, yeah. so that's, It's always it's always blowing out, though, in San Francisco, and they, they fixed the stadium. It's pretty high for that, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But so if people want to, like, stack up this game just because you see that wind, they built the stadium so it mitigates uh, the wind blowing out because it's almost always blowing out yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, so I ran my crunches earlier. Um, on FanDuel, it's a lot of Eduardo Rodriguez, Morton, Ariad, and Lester. Uh, and that will that will hold up the whole way. It's going to be a lot of Brewers, a lot of Reds, a yeah. lot of Cubs. Like that's Those are going to be the three things I need. If that Brewers-Reds Brewers, uh, game pops off, I'll be a very, very happy man. Yeah, I think if I if I had to game stack and make one lineup, it would be a, a Brewers Reds like, just go five Brewers, three Reds. Uh, I think that game has the most, the the highest chance to end like nine to eight. Yeah. All right. If you're looking at two pitchers, give me the two pitchers on DK. We'll see what lines are out there right now. Um, try, try Morton and Eduardo. I bet you could do a bunch with that. Oh yeah, we've got uh. 19 to choose from lots of man lots of boston milwaukee uh boston and the <clears throat> blue jays boston and the twins so okay man like looking at all that i didn't know you could get red Sox and brewers or you could probably do astros and brewers or something like that or even the blue jays like yeah maybe i won't need these jordan zimmermans and lance lynn's and I could just go with Morton and Eduardo. So, whatever. Like, I do like some of these guys maybe on different slates, but if I can get Morton and Eduardo Rodriguez with two of the stacks that we talked about, I'm yeah, perfectly you, and fine And you with can that. very easily. Yeah, I see, like, a full Brewer stack with uh, – yeah, right there. So, full Brewers and – or the one next to it, to your right. Yeah. Yeah. Full Brewers and Astros. Yeah. 
And you're getting so, Altuve, Bregman, Kurt, like the real part of the Astros lineup too. So yeah, that's that's pretty ridiculous. You can so. get whatever you need with Eduardo Rodriguez and Charlie Morton, which is very very appealing. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> All righty, uh, plug hockey. Yeah, there's two games tonight. Um, should be really fun. These are a couple of game threes, I believe. Let me check. Anyways, I know I know the Vegas game is a game three. Um, that series has been really fun. They just had a double OT game. Uh, the Tampa Boston game is game two, so this will uh, the slate starts at seven Eastern sharp, so not seven oh five like MLB. I'll have the two uh, articles, normal articles, spotlight plays and the stacks. Um, it should be a really fun slate. These two game slates have been really fun and profitable. So if you've read my stuff, then you've probably had some success. I know I've, I've heard a lot of good feedback. So I'm excited to finish out this NHL season and hopefully have a couple more big nights. Hell yeah. Only one NBA game, so I don't have to have people yelling at me about doing NBA <laughs> stuff. Uh, you should watch that game go, though. It should be should be good. Who, who plays? Uh, Sixers and Celtics tonight. Oh, yeah, I'll watch that. Yeah. It's good stuff. I yeah, think I'm right. sure. I was looking ahead. Ooh, uh, we've got a an update to the Rockies Cubs total. Let's hear it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it went ten? up. It went up a scotch. Yeah, it's gonna be ten. It's nine and a half right now, and people yeah. are clobbering that, so it's ten at some books. Uh, I'm gonna switch that right now just to show everybody how much how dramatic it ends up being. Uh, let's yeah, move so that to ten. Let's bump that. So that certainly makes the slate a little bit more interesting, especially if you wanted to stack the Red Sox. Um, oh boy. Or, like, the expensive Brewers or Astros. Like, a lot of ownership's going to gravitate towards the Cubs now, I would think. Yeah, they're going to be very heavily owned. 5.6 run implied total. It is now four-tenths of a run higher than the Red Sox. Uh, Cubs are going to be number one stack with a bullet. Um, and that's going to pull Lester out of what I would have considered to be value town. Um, Morton, Arietta, and Eduardo Rodriguez are going to be my three clear-cut pitchers on FanDuel. And uh, I'm going to be diving into pools of Cubs tonight. Yeah, don't forget about those Rockies, though, either. True. Uh, they yeah, get the win, too. So. As well. Yeah. So, LeMahieu, Arenado, Story, Ionetta. Ionetta in particular. Really, really yeah. good spot. Um I'm glad I saw that right before we did this. Yeah, that that's a big number. So people worried about the wind. It's going to be coming out in a hurry uh, in Chicago. So take keep an yeah. eye on that. You got anything else? No, good luck tonight, guys. It should be a fun slate now with uh, Wrigley win game and a bunch of other viable stacks. Absolutely. Uh, tune in tonight, 6 o'clock, myself and Chris Baggs. Uh, we'll have a live show before lock for the hour before the games. Uh, so come check that out. Like and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, best of luck tonight, and we will talk to you again in the morning. Adios, everybody.